Hey everybody. In the process of installing the uh, Airward uh, Vans RV10 access cover panel, uh, this is for the tunnel. And I mean, you could have made one yourself, but I just figured this is easier just to buy it. Um, one of the things you had to do is, because I already had the floor riveted in, I needed to drill out some of the rivets down here on the bottom. And then there's a bottom row of rivets, or bottom row of holes that you need to drill through. They lined up pretty good. I've seen, they had a comment in there that sometimes they don't line up properly. Mine were good, except for probably the last one, but it was still, it wasn't too bad. And then from there, drilled out all of these holes for the rivets that are gonna hold it in, and drilled the four corner holes, they're number 10s, so that now what I'll do is I'll put the actual cover plate in those holes and then draw a line around it and cut out the hole for the cover plate. Um, put in all of my uh, nut plates in here, countersink it and so on so it looks uh, looks good and then of course I'll prime it. But uh, I figured I'd share this, nothing too complicated. They actually t at, tell you to remove the cables, rudder cables and uh, on the inside in here, you can see, of course, I've got the brake lines run. I didn't do that, uh, but you have to be really careful uh, that you don't uh, don't nick any of the lines. If you do, um, that will be a huge issue for you, right? So uh, you really do want to take care and, you know, maybe it's the best practice to remove them. Maybe I should have, I didn't, um, but I'm trying to be as careful as I can. It's not a big deal to move, but like here, for instance, if you're not careful, you can see they come out pretty much right underneath here. So, you know, you really do wanna keep an eye on it and not get any metal in there and certainly not nick uh, the cables. Figured I'd share that with you. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, what I'll do is uh, once I mark the panel and I get the corners marked out, I'll use a bit to enlarge the corners and then I'll cut a line straight across to join the corners and pop it out and then file it down and uh, go from there. And like I said, you know, obviously I, I prime all of the stuff that I do. I just think it, uh, it hardens it up nicely and uh, it'll help hopefully you don't get rust and things like that in it. And I, you know, I know this is a hot topic, but for me, I figured for the extra little bit of work, I may as well do it. Here it is with the uh, access cover clicoed on uh, to the holes that I'd mentioned earlier. So these are gonna be two of the screw holes and then just outline it with a marker. And like I said, what I'll do is I'll, I'll drill out these corner holes, make them a little large just to get them get it started and then cut the line. And of course, remember, you know, this line, this marker line, you wanna cut it a little shy of that because if you cut it on the outside of that, it's gonna to be too big. But uh, there you go. So the first thing I did, I had the hole here for the alignment. You can see it's marked. And then I just used my bit to uh, enlarge the hole until it pretty much touches the line. Uh, that way I've got nice clean corners. And now I just need to cut across and pair up the corners. Okay, continuing right where we left off, I cut out the opening and you can see I have the access cover just kind of clicoed in here right now. Um, it was pretty straightforward. I drilled out where these clicos are. Remember we, we had drilled the holes in here. I actually took the bit, enlarged those with this thing uh, till it got to the right radius. So that made the nice corners for me. And then what I did is I used a combination of this guy with this blade on it to kind of cut in a straight line to get a nice straight line across the top. Not too bad. And then I also used my Dremel right down here in the corner just to be uh, closer. I originally started to use my Dremel and I had everything measured out. You'll notice I moved the rudder cable out of the way to make sure I didn't do anything with that. However, um, when I measured it out, make sure it was not gonna hit anything. I did it based on the Dremel, but when I ended up actually using it, 
with my oscillating tool, I ended up touching the side of, uh, maybe you can see it here, of the nut on here. I gotta look at it, I'm not sure it matters, but I just may, re may remake the line, just not sure yet. Anyway, so there it is. And now it's a matter of doing some dippling, uh, get this primed, put the, uh, the uh, lock nuts on here, and, uh, or sorry, the nut plates on here, and this guy should be good to go. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, the one thing I did also find is, let me go around to the other side. According to the instructions, it said to start with the third rivet in, which is exactly where I lined it up. However, I thought for the longest while, maybe I should move it in one. I didn't. I should have, because you can see here, it actually interferes with the bracket that holds the valve. So if you're doing this, you might want to move it ahead one. Also, I think if you move it ahead one, at least on my configuration, it gives you, uh, if I get up here again, you can see the access panel will probably give you a little bit better access to that. Not that it's a problem anyway, but just might make it a little easier. And I thought about it and I thought, well, they said this way, but you know, this is where you got to make your own decisions, right? Something to think about, and uh, if you're building, if you do, I would put this access panel in beforehand, especially if you're going to put, um, you know, a carbon fiber cockpit in here, uh, panel, because this is going to get covered over. It's going to be very hard to get in here. You want to have an access panel to get in, check your fuel filter if you need to, just make sure everything's good, and from in here you can do that. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Cheers. Bye now. So everybody, here's the tunnel access cover put in. I've just got some screws in here temporarily. By the way, um, when you prime things, you don't want to prime over those screw holes. It can make this painful. But it went together pretty good, a little tight in here. Um, because of this fuel selector mount, I was not able to squeeze a rivet here. So instead I just put in a uh, Cherry Max, didn't really need it. And I did the same down on the very bottom ones because you can't get down there. But other than that, it went pretty good. And uh, now I have an access panel. Next it's uh, put the wiring back in and uh, put my red cube down here and get all the plumbing done for it so I can have my fuel lines back in. Other than that, straightforward. Oh, one thing I did do is these are all dimpled, all of the 40s, and uh, I machine countersunk them behind on the plate back here. So that was pretty straightforward as well. Cheers.